Hello, welcome back. We are Pull on the Call podcast. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And today we have episode number 22. And with us, we have the amazing Sarah from Bees Knees Knee Pads. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for taking the time to meet with us this morning and tell us about yourself and your knee pads and <laughs> your teaching and everything wonderful that you do. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. I'm happy to be here. Hell so yes. excited. Thank you and welcome. So I guess I'll start it off. <laughs> um, all right. So we'll start with something, I guess, simple and easy. How did you get into Poe? <laughs> um, Google. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, I spent a long time trying to find like my thing, you know, like I didn't have a hobby or an activity or a passion. And um, right around the time I was like 32 or 33, is, I, I was 33 when I found pole. So I had tried everything um, from, let's see, Tai Chi to watercolor painting, um, digital photography, uh, you name it. I, I tried everything at least once um, just to see what stuck. And uh, the only thing that stuck was pole dance. So I, 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 I don't know what led me to Google it, but, um, and thinking about, that that time period in in my life and and in poll in general, I probably saw a viral Facebook video of something and was like, that looks cool. I want to do that. And I would love to know what I Googled because I didn't know the term like pole dance classes near me. I mean, that's what I would search now. Uh, but I didn't know what to search. So I would love to go back in time and look over my shoulder and see what I put in the Google search terms, like probably like stripper clothes on class or something. I probably like, I didn't know what terms to search. So I probably made up something ridiculous, but, um, because it was 2013, um, I got to sort of be the benefactor of all the people who brought poll to the mainstream. I Googled it and it actually got two results. So to all of the people who brought poll like out of the clubs and into the suburbs, I am eternally grateful because all I had to do was Google and find, um, there were actually two studios near me and I picked one and I've been there ever since. So um, yeah, I Googled it. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that story because that's r roughly pretty much how I started. I Google, I mean, I started in the strip club, but I wanted to get better by Google searching stripper moves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> love it well did you have any any dance background before pole or it was just um fantastic question the answer is hard no um no what? i didn't dance ever um and in fact i have another story for you brace for impact it's like tragic so when i was 23 i was like i want to learn to dance now i never danced as you know, when you think about like people who grew up dancing, you know, your parents signed you up for dance classes when you were six and you have the tutu and the recital and all that stuff. My mom danced. Um, and so she tried to get me to do it. And I was like, fuck this six years old, like, fuck this. I don't want to do this. So it just wasn't for me. So years later, I regretted it. I was 23. Um, oh, that's a lie. I was 25. Close enough. And I was like, I want to, I really wish I'd learned to dance. I never did that. So I, and this this was the t this tells you what time period it was. I couldn't Google it. <laughs> I grabbed the yellow pages <laughs> and found um, a dance studio near me, and I called a whole bunch of them to ask if they had beginner adult classes. And they were like, "What? No, we we do not have that." Um, and I found one that was like, "Yeah, we have an adult dance class." And I said, "Well, is it for beginners?" And the studio owner was like, well, no, but I mean, you'll be fine. Come on down. You'll be fine. And I was like, I don't think you understand how bad I am. I, whatever you would teach a child, I need you to do that for me. And she was like, no, nah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Come on down. Um, and it turned out, I, I told my mom I was taking a dance class and it turned out I was going to the studio where she danced at growing up, like in a weird twist of fate. So I'm like, oh, it's fate. I'm supposed to be here. This is going to be so great. And I went down and narrator, it was not, it was not great. So all these girls were like seasoned dancers. Um, 
and they were like, yeah, we're just going to throw together some choreography to get this Kelly Clarkson's breakaway, like a lyrical dance. Okay. And, and I'm like, they're like, let's warm up. And they do, um, chasses. Am I saying that right? Hopefully I could not, I did I still can't do that. The coordination with the arms and the legs. I was so bad at it. And as soon as we started moving, it was apparent to everyone else in the room. Oh shit. This girl does not know anything. And um, the, the air in the room felt like it weighed a thousand pounds because it was like awkward, right? And they, they must have known right off rip because they all had their like Capizio dance sweater wraps and the little skirt and the leggings that go underneath, like the cute outfits. I walked in in track pants and a t-shirt um, and bare feet. I looked like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. It was a disaster. And I left feeling like, like I was in the way, like I was constantly in the way because um, I didn't know where to be or where to put my body. And, and the class wasn't geared towards instructing a brand new person. So they didn't know what to do with me. It was awkward. And I was like, what I left being like, well, that was bad. But then I gave myself like a little pep talk. It was like, of course you're bad at it. You're new at it. Like, don't quit, go back. And I think I went back like a second time, maybe a third time. And then the studio owner was like, hey, you know, we're sliding into winter. Sometimes we cancel classes due to bad weather. Or if the girls can't make it, just give us a call. Make sure class is still on. And I'm like, okay. So I call the next Monday and she's like, I can see your face. Like, you know where this is going, right? She's like, oh yeah, class is canceled. And I'm like, okay, no problem. Next week, class is canceled. Week after, class is canceled. And I'm like, I'm getting in my head and I'm, and I'm having that fight where they're like, you're so bad that they're telling you class is canceled. And then the other half of me is like, Dude, don't do this to yourself. Don't invent a story about why people, like, be better than that. Take them at their face value. Class is canceled. So I'm like, well, I got to go to the grocery store anyway. I know full well what I'm doing. I take the long way home. I drive by the studio. All the lights are on. All the cars are there. And I'm like, I'm that bad that they, rather than just, and here's like a sidebar, knowing what I know now, if you're the studio owner, pull me aside and say, Hey dude, why don't you do some private lessons? We can really help you. Like there's so many better ways to handle it. But I, but the lesson I took from that was I was so fucking bad at this that they were just like, don't come back. And I was crushed, like super crushed. And, um, anyway, so that I'm, so I'm 25 years later, I go on the quest to find my thing. I hop from this and that I find pole dance and, and I fall in love, but the, the other part of the story is if I hadn't landed at Love Pole Fitness, I don't know that I would have continued pulling. It might have been the next thing that I did for a few months and then got bored. But I took that first class. I was terrified. Once again, did not have the right outfit. I wore, I didn't own shorts. So I wore a tennis skirt um, and I think like a, like a yoga, like a yoga top or something. I, whatever. I, if you saw me, you'd be like, who is that? And, um, at the end of the class, Tobin, the owner came over and said, what'd you think? Did you have fun? And I said, yes. And she said, do you want to come back? And I shit you not. I teared up and I said, you'll let me. And she was like, I mean, she and I are like best friends. Now we talk every day. She's heard the story a million times. So she knows what it, she knows now what it meant to me then, but she's from her point of view, she must've been like, what do you mean? Will you let me like, I want to make money. Of course I want you to come back, <laughs> you know? But to me, it was that, that brief moment, that one moment of just blanket acceptance. Like you are terrible at this and you are supposed to be terrible at this. And this is the space to start from zero. And that is totally okay. And we want you here. I was just like, I mean, if it was, I mean, it was pole dance, but if it was like fire eating, if it was shoveling shit from one end of the parking lot to the other, I would have stayed just based on that moment of acceptance because that was like the hugest thing to me. So yeah, whenever people are like, how did you get into pole? I'm like, I'm like, all right, grab a glass of water and sit back. Cause I got some feelings for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. That fucking studio. <laughs> it's a roller coaster, right? That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. I'm sorry you had to have that experience. Uh, you know what? It's it's uh it's the manure from which a flower grew, so it's all good. Yeah, I heard at yeah. the time, but it's a it's a wild story now to think about. For sure. <laughs> My mom wasn't happy. My mom was like, "I can't believe she was mean to you." I'm gonna go down there. I'm like, "Mom, I'm sure. <laughs> I can handle it." But Wow. It makes you wonder how many other people get deterred just because of similar experiences. It's so sad. 
Yeah, and, yeah. and it's not just like traditional dance studios. It's like just any space in general. It doesn't yeah. even have to be movement related. Like mm -hmm. the the art of making people feel like they belong. It, it really yeah. it really does make a huge difference. It can send people off on a certain trajectory. I mean, look at look at um all of the pole studios. I, I can think of a handful that are started because they couldn't, someone couldn't get what they wanted at their own pole studio. So they were mm -hmm. like, fuck this, I'm going to get my own. Whether it's like plus size acceptance or body neutrality or just, I, I don't know, like I'm just seeing a lot of people saying, fuck this, I'll start my own so I can get what I want. And um, I mean, I, I like that, but at the same time, I'm like, well, why aren't you getting what you want where you are? You know, why don't you feel at home wherever you started? Um, I don't know. It's just, uh, I guess I don't know what I really have to say about that, except it's, it's all good because it, it leads to something else. <laughs> Right, I haven't thought about that too. Like, oh, I wish, you know, you, you could have come to me and like, we could have, you know, work, grown together. But I guess all in all on the other side of it, it is beneficial to have more pole studios because, you know, then there's more locations that people can attend and, and different kinds of classes you can try. And that all, all in all makes you a more well-rounded dancer anyway. Absolutely. But yeah, for the, but for the business aspect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So how did you end up teaching then? Um, so I took so many classes that, um, I mean, I was there all the time. <laughs> so I had heard, uh, I think I saw probably on Facebook cause I didn't have an Instagram before I started poll. It's like, which, you know, I like literally got an Instagram so I could like put poll on it. Um, but I think I saw some kind of like expert certification ad that popped up somewhere. And I was like, huh, if that ever came around my, my way, I would do it. Um, and because I was close with Tobin, I said, Hey, if you ever host one of those, I don't know if you're thinking about it, but if you ever host one of those, I will do it. And at the time I wasn't an instructor. Um, and I was pretty new polar, but it didn't seem that outlandish to me to get a certification in some, in something because my, my background is I was a, a public school teacher for 18 years. So like when you, when you, you have that teacher mindset, you learn something new and you're like, okay, well, can I get certified in this? Like, can I take an additional course in this? It's the teacher. I, I think, you know, a true teacher when they're excited to show you something they've learned, right? Like, Hey, I learned this new thing. I can't wait to teach it to you. So I, I didn't really have this master plan to become a pole instructor, but I thought, you know, well, get a cert in it. You never know where it leads. And that's totally from my like previous teacher training as a public school teacher. So sure enough, she was like, yeah, I'm doing the expert level one, level two. And I was like, sign me up. And it was awesome. I mean, it, forget about what you learn, which is also top notch. It was two straight days of polling nonstop. I was like, yes, sign me up. I will be there. Um, and I learned a lot. It was great. And then I had the certification for maybe like, I don't know, six to eight months before I ever did anything. Um, and then T Tobin got sick of teaching Tuesdays. She was teaching every day and she was like, I need a day off. You want Tuesdays? And I was like, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, and so, I, and there we go. And the first class that I had to teach was um, floor work and transitions. And I didn't know shit about either one of them, but I figured it out. I mean, like that's the other, like, uh, old teacher mindset is uh, you only have to be like one day ahead of your students. So all I had to do was be one week ahead of my floor work students. And they were like, wow, this is awesome. And I'm like, is it? Okay, good. This is going well. Um, but I, you know, knowing now that like, I, I have a knee pad brand. What if she had given me a different class? Maybe I wouldn't have needed knee pads so badly. Like it's so wild to look back and think of this really weird cause and effect. Like, if that dance teacher hadn't told me I was so bad, I wouldn't have been so grateful to be accepted at Love Pole Fitness and I wouldn't have gotten a certification. And I went like to think of all the things that have to go together to make this crazy life possible. Like I can't think about it too much because it feels a bit, I don't know. It, it's a bit weird, but. Overwhelming. I know yeah. Yeah. Kind of, you want to pull out some medical marijuana. To I know. Like, I know. I'm, I'm like, is, if this is a simulation, like, yeah, my, my character has a, an awesome arc. It's really beautiful. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so then, 
that brings us into how did you start with the, the bees, knees, knee pads? Yeah. yeah so um, now, I mean, now there are, are pole dance knee pads. Every brand's got one or, you know, someone's got their brand on their retail. Like there's tons now. But when um, I was first teaching floor work, I, there really weren't any. There was maybe one or two. I think there was like Mighty Grip. Um, and that might've been it. And they have the one, the vinyl on the sides. I tried those. Um, but like, you know, if you're doing floor work exclusively, you want to slip and slide around. Sometimes you want to take them off. Sometimes you want to put them on. Um, and I was choreographing a workshop with another instructor, which is like a wild thing to say. I was choreographing a workshop with another instructor when 10 years ago, I was so bad at it that they wouldn't even let me come to class. So I, like, when people are like, oh, you make it look so easy. I'm like, fuck that. It's I've worked for it. So anyway, um, back to the back to the topic. She we had to we were doing something and we decided to put in like a floor work move and we had to stop and put our knee pads on. And she said, someone's got to make knee pads that have like zippers or snaps or Velcro or something. And I, I cannot tell you what made me decide that that person was me. But I was like, fuck it, I'll try it. I have no background in apparel production design or manufacture I, there's no like secret card in my back pocket where i'm like oh well i went to fashion school so like there's nothing okay i have no business saying yes to myself in this scenario but once again if, i mean you know whoever's controlling my simulation character was like her make her do it let's see what happens so um i kind of kept the idea in the back of my head and let it sit there for a minute and my um so my husband is a musician so he's on he's on the road a lot so like you know you sit at home on the weekend with nothing to do it's 11 o'clock p.m there's no pole class so <laughs> i'm like all right maybe i'll like try to make a knee pad i sewed a prototype and i had it and i was just kind of cold called a whole bunch of people being like i have this thing will you help me make it i mean there is there is an apparel, there is a product development process that's pretty standard, which I know now, but me then didn't know it. I just walked around with this thing and was like, I made this thing. Can you help me make it? And a lot of people were like, first of all, they were like, it's a pole dance. What? Then you have to explain pole dance to them. By the time you're done doing that, they're like, yeah, no pass. Um, or they're like a knee pad. No, we don't, we make t-shirts. We don't do that. So finding someone who would a coach me through this entire process because I didn't know anything. I mean, you're pretty much taking a baby bird under your wing at that point. Um, and B has to be interested in making a knee pad, which most people don't want to make that. It's not sexy. Well, it is now, thanks to me, but it's a, it's not a sexy product that people are like, oh yeah, I want to make that. Um, so I, the person who said yes to me is actually out in Western Mass right near you guys. And he said, um, he's like, well, I make knee braces. How different can it be? Um, once again, the narrator, it was very different, but he at least felt like he and I had some overlap and, um, he started making samples for me, like one at a time, one knee pad at a time, these horrendous looking samples, um, roughly sewn, but just to get the idea, it's called a construction sample. And I'd bring them to the studio every Tuesday to my floor work class. And I'd say, who wants to put this on and test it out and tell me what you think? And I did that 10 times. So after 10 samples, I finally had like the thing and we moved to prototype and then they didn't fit anybody. I made them the sizing all wrong. So uh, I had to do prototypes too. And those worked. And that whole thing from soup to nuts took about nine months. So when I say bees knees is like my baby, like it is like I, I gestated it for nine months. And uh, um, so that was kind of it. And, and it's, like why knee pads and why me? Who knows? Um, I mean, actually, probably the most interesting thing, like I keep looking back and finding these things that go together, like the fact that I tried to go to my mom's dance studio and you're like, whoa, that's wild. When I started at Love Pole Fitness, there were like 67 Sarahs. So it got really confusing when you're all upside down and someone says like, Sarah, move your back foot. Everyone's like, which one? Like, which, which Sarah? So I became Sarah B because my last name is Bryant. And then maybe two years after that, I get this idea for a knee pad. I look at my husband. I remember I was taking a nap and I was kind of thinking about it. And I thought, holy shit, I got to call them bees knees. That's too perfect. 
So I leap out of bed and I tell my husband, I'm going to call them bee's knees. And he goes, oh, that's good. <laughs> like the, and, and like, just so understated in that, like, oh, that's good. And, um, it's just wild to me that my nickname came first and then I made a knee pad. It's not like I had to reinvent this character, Sarah B to, to fit the knee pad. I was already her. I don't know. It's just, my mind's going to, my mind's going to blow up thinking about it, how it all came together. A little magical. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah. It's crazy. It's I so love it. It, show, it goes to show like everybody that anything could happen. You really don't know. You really just don't know. Just take the step. Yeah, just right. give it a try. Even yeah. if it's nothing that you ever thought. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so cool. So how many different styles of knee pads do you have? Um, well, I have, so I only have, as far as like a style goes, I have the one style. One it's style. the knee pad with all of the features. It's got Velcro hmm. straps. It's got removable pad inserts. So there's a pocket so you can pull the, app, the pad inserts out. It's got an open back design. It's got compression mesh so it like fits to your knee um, and a little bit of stretch. Um, and so like, it's the one style. A lot of times people ask me like, oh, well, do you have some with grip? And I'm like, no, you just take them off. Like just strip them off if you need to grip the pole. But as far as colorways goes, oh man, I just can't stop making them. They're so fun. So I have We're black and white. Style. <laughs> yeah, like so I have black and white. Um, and those are, I call those the originals. And then um, I have the nudes collection, which I'm really proud of. Um, that was hard to make because the materials I use, they all come in black, white, and beige, it, like right off the rack. So any color or pattern you see that's not black, white, or beige, I have to get all the materials specially made, which is incredibly expensive, um, but worth it. So I could have had, as soon as I made black, people were like, when are you going to make nude? All pole dancers want nude. They want nude everything. I want to look naked. And they asked for nude, but I was like, I think what you mean is beige. Um, but I'd like to make nude when everyone can look nude, like nudes for everyone. So, um, it took a long time to get the money and the materials together because I had to get white mesh fabric and have it dyed. I say, and have it dyed, but what that really means is six months of trying to find a dye house in the United States, like all of the infrastructure for manufacturing a product, especially like a soft good. It, we, we offshored that 50 years ago. So I'm trying to do something in the United States that died a long time ago. So it's, it's not like you just call up a Google dye house. You will find dye house apartments. They've all, all of these old mill buildings have been turned into apartments. So like you, they don't exist anymore. So I finally found a dye house that would dye my small quantity of material. Cause some of them don't get out of bed for like less than 5,000 yards. And I'm like, well, I need like 15. So can you please take pity on me? Um, so it, it did take a long time, but I launched uh, four nudes. My nudes collection had four nudes and I launched in April of 2019. And I'm like, so proud of that. It sold out. I ran out of materials. So I had to start the process all over again, which takes a really long time. And of course, by that time, other brands had already started making, you know, multiple nudes and I'm like, but I'm behind on my relaunch because everything takes so long for me because I'm so small and I'm trying to do things, you know, in the States. So by the time I relaunched, other brands had already done it and, um, or had caught up, I guess, but, uh, I have five now. So I have, I added uh, a middle shade, so to speak. Um, and it's a nice, it's a beautiful cinnamony color. I call it jazz, um, because I actually got feedback on my colors from jazz, the polar. So I was like, would you mind if I named one jazz? And she was like, not at all, but she's actually a fawn. She wears fawn. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so I have five nudes and then there's edge. So I have like maybe seven of those that have the trim. Those are really cool. And then solid colors. Um, and then patterns, uh, like sweet Mary Jane, they have pot leaves on them. Those are wicked cool. And, oh, uh, Fuck You Pay Me is my favorite. It's just got uh, cash money all over it. That's Naming them is definitely my favorite part. Uh, it's definitely my favorite part. Yeah, maybe that's why, because I, I thought, I 
they're like different characters to me because you yeah. named them and they like become <laughs> they do they kind of take on a life of their own and um so you know i now have them on the website because i'm trying to reposition the brand as a four product brand knee pads uh planners the pull bag which i have a sample it is on the way it is stuck in customs um but it is, it's on the way, I'm excited. And then the floor work shrug, which I have a couple of meetings this week um, on developing samples for that. So that's really exciting. So I took all of the knee pads, cause there's like 30 of them and just merged them into one product called the Bees Knees Knee Pad. So now it's easier to find on the website, which is good. But it also means all of the individual product descriptions I wrote, like they got compressed down to one and I'm like, oh man, I was really proud of all of the Queen Crimson stuff I, I wrote and um, I, I do think of them as like little characters. That's funny you said that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it really comes across as that. Maybe you can um, write like little blogs about them. Each so, yeah, or, or come out <laughs> with like trading cards, knee pad trading cards, right? Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and can I say too, I think that these knees are probably the number one knee pad used in PSO. It's just, like the way that they get ripped off, like ever, like when it happens, it's like, oh, cool! Like, <laughs> I love that. It inspires everyone to be like, now I'm going up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, that, I actually debuted them at PSO. I'd only been in business like a month. Um, October 2018 is when I opened my shop, and then I competed at PSO Northeast in uh, the following month in November. And in my routine, I ripped off my knee pads. And it is literally the fav my favorite part of that competition video because you can hear all of my friends on the side just scream their heads off when I rip them off. And I mean, I, you love to see it. I love to see it. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, wow, you have had a, quite a busy couple years for sure. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, absolutely. I don't sleep much. <laughs> But it's fun. That's that's for sure. Oh, yeah. And do you do you teach anymore? Um, you said you used to teach a uh, grade school, or yeah, great question. So no, um, I taught high school for eighteen years. Um, so I went to college to be a teacher because I honestly, because I didn't really know what else to do, and my dad said I'd be good at it. And it turns out he was right. I am. I feel like I am a good teacher. I think I am a very good teacher. Um, but I got sick of teaching stuff that I didn't think mattered. Um, I taught high school. Uh, I taught high school English for 18 years. I got, I really got sick of teaching stuff that, you know, over the years I realized like, Jesus, none of this really matters. Um, I got sick of teaching people who didn't want to be there. Um, I got sick of um, constantly trying to prove that I was a subject matter expert, whether it was to parents, admin, students, colleagues, or any other stakeholder who thinks that, you know, teachers put their feet up on the desk and read the paper and, and stop complaining and get summers off. I was like, I'm really just, you know, I'm just sick of this. I'm sick of, of fighting to prove something that should be obvious at this point, because if my job's so fucking easy, you come in and do it. So, um, and there was also the feeling of sameness. Like when you're, when you're a, a, a like a, a school teacher, it is a blessing to have your own classroom. Like if you aren't a teacher and you assume yeah, you get a classroom. No, you don't. Not always. Sometimes you have to share it with other people. I know people have taught off of like a cart, like they push a cart from room to room or their classroom is like a converted closet. You know, it's, it's, I, I strolled into this job and they gave me a classroom with windows. I mean, I thought I was blessed. Right. And, but after year 10, I'm like, it's the same room with the same view out the same windows. And I used to have this like, I used to really want that. Um, I mean, maybe this only happens in the movies where you're doing a good job and the big boss knocks on your window or your door and says, Hey, we'd like to promote you. Nobody does that when you're a teacher, like nothing is ever going to change. And a lot of people like that. They like the steadiness after 18 years. I was like, well, I know what the next 18 are going to look like. And I don't want to die here because this is, it's never going to change. Every year was exactly the same. And that really got to me too. Um, so it was a big decision to quit because it was the only job I ever had. I mean, when you're a, a teacher, it's a culture of staying. You are supposed to stay there forever. Like you don't just kind of quit and move around. That's a bad look on your resume. So 
when I quit, it was like a really big deal. And it was really scary. And, but, but also like I was crying every day on the way to work. I was like, I can't keep doing this. I was just miserable. So I gave my notice, get this January of 2020, <laughs> two months later, the entire school shut down and was like, just don't, just don't come in. We'll do this via zoom. Everyone was miserable. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> this is great. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was an anticlimactic ending, but whatever. I was like, fine. I just worked from home, looked for other jobs and was like, good. I don't, I'm done with this. So, um, and it was weird because I, I, I told my principal in January, I am not coming back because they do scheduling like for the next year very early. So I wanted them to know. And I handed in my letter in February. And in February, I got called into the office for like, uh, an online presence that was disrupting, disruptive to learning, which would be like what my, my personal Instagram was private at that time. So they were obviously talking about my business accounts and they were like, nobody made me do anything. I was not forced to do anything, but I was asked like, will you put all this stuff on private? And because I was, I don't know, I guess I could be mean to myself and say, you know, I was a coward. I was scared. I was like, I need this paycheck and I am not going to give you guys any reason I'm quitting and I'm not going to give you guys any reason to like say, well, we're suspending you without pay. Cause I didn't have a job yet at that point. So I ended up, you know, just saying like, yes, I will agree to put all my stuff on private. Um, and then once June came, I turned it all back on, but it really sucked. I was like, what an inglorious ending to an 18 year career. And then to top it all off, you know, I had to go in, in May, alone because I mean, the school was closed. So we had to schedule individual appointments to go into the building and clean up our classrooms. But I had to go in and clean mine up forever, you know, like pack it up. Like I was never coming. I, I spent an hour threw everything in the dumpster and went home. I was like, this is the, it was the most unceremonious ending to a near two decade career. And when people told me like, yeah, but you're a teacher that matters. I'm like, no, it didn't. It didn't matter at all. Like none of this matters. So this is a sidebar, but to anyone out there who thinks of taking a chance on themselves, fucking take it. Okay. Because they will put up your, as, if you die, they will advertise for your job before they put up your obit. Okay. Just do you and, and get out there and do what you want to do. But uh, anyway, what was the question? <laughs> My coffee oh, kicked in, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. That, that makes me feel really sad for, you know, the industry of teaching, you know, <laughs> schools and, and everything too. I'm, that sucks. It's, I mean, so much. Every, it, that's my experience. There are plenty of mm -hmm. teachers who are still in the game and they still believe in it and they, they believe that it's important. Um, I, I, that is just one experience of one person. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. So when I quit actually to connect it back to bees knees, I mean, my whole plan was, well, I'm just going to get another job. Like I'm just going to get another career. And I redid my resume and I had a portfolio and I was applying all these jobs on indeed to be like a project project manager or like an instructional designer. Like I was trying to reinvent another career. Um, and it never occurred to me to like run my business for real. Like I'm so, <laughs> it's like, it just never occurred to me because up until that point for, you know, for anyone who's running a business or thinking about running their own business, like, you, like I didn't pay myself for until 2020. I started the business in 2018. I didn't pay myself until 2020. Partly because I didn't have to. I mean, I was just, I had another job. So I kind of just looked at it as like my, my hobby, like my fun little cute hobby where I have this business and isn't it adorable. And then when I had to find another job and maybe it's because it was a pandemic, maybe it's because I am completely and totally unmarketable. Who knows? but I never ended up finding another job and September came and that's when my benefits stopped. That's when my paycheck stopped. And I was like, well, fuck, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And kind of like, you know, I had the nap and I jumped up and told my husband, I'm going to call them bees knees. I jumped up from a crying nap after not finding any jobs and feeling really sad about it. I jumped up and I said, what if I like run my business and that's my job. And he goes, I thought that's what you were going to do. Was that not your plan? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> so then I, that's when I really like, I had been running bees knees, so to speak up until that point.
but September 2020 is when I really think of when it when my business started because that's when I started treating it like a business and not a hobby. Like this is this is a business, not a church. This is a business, not a charity. This is a business, not a hobby. So I had to figure out how to pay myself. And I read three chapters of a book and was like, close enough, let's go. And I started paying myself. And it turned out that that was, you know, not enough. And then I overcorrected and it was too much. Like I am a test and learn kind of person. And it turns out that that's exactly what you need to be to have an agile product and have a flexible business. So in a way, like who the, 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 the fuck it and find out person that I am is the person I needed to be to run this business. So now every day I wake up and I'm like, I don't know how I got here, but like, don't spook the universe. Okay. Like you jumped off the cliff, you built your wings on the way down. You didn't crash land. Uh, like, shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't spook the universe. I love it. Like, there's no other options for for you. You're on this crazy train. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's exactly oh, it. Oh. I love it. <laughs> oh, well, where do you think the crazy train will take you in the future? Well, hopefully, I mean, when people ask me, maybe like a year ago, where do you where do you want your business to be in five years? My answer was like, I don't know, still here. <laughs> like that, just fingers crossed, I'm still here. Now I have sort of a, a better vision for this brand that, like I said earlier, I'm trying to reposition as a four product brand. Um, and it's, it's, it's slow. Um, and people are getting similar products to market faster because quite frankly, they are purchasing them off the shelf from China and sticking their label on it. And they're calling it a pole dance bag or a pole dance knee pad or a pole dance whatever. Um, and calling it a pole dance whatever doesn't make it so. Unless it's made specifically for pole dance. So likewise, like all of my knee pad competitors, um, in fact, you or anyone listening can do this yourself. Go on Alibaba and search the term pole dance knee pads. You'll recognize every single one of those brands and you won't see me there. It's not a diss. It's just a fact. It's why I'm different. It's why I'm slow. It's why I'm more expensive than everybody else. But I'm also not a gardening, rollerblading, floor cleaning, wrestling, also pole dancing knee pad, right? They're so generic that they're not actually made for what we do. And they're not made for the people who do it. Um, compare the size charts of other brands to mine. Mine are uh, the standard sizes. I think I am one to two inches bigger than the largest competitor and strap extenders make it go up to 10 inches. So like it's not a generic size chart marked and scaled by some factory overseas. The size chart at bees knees is informed by my friend's legs. I measured my friend's legs. I measured everybody's legs. They're <laughs> like, they have born out of real people. So the question is, where do you see yourself in five years? And hopefully what I, what I will be is recognized as the brand that makes the stuff for pole dancers that we really need. The stuff that is too complicated and too slow and too, you know, just has too many obstacles for other brands to even bother with it. Um, because I think a lot of times what people are looking for is, it, 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 what other brands are looking for in a knee pad is something that is incredibly inexpensive that you can mark up and then throw in as like an, an add on to increase average order value when your customers check out. For me, it is the thing. It is the product. It is the, the, it is the, the thing. <laughs> so uh, I'm so articulate about this business, but I guess what, what I would like is to be recognized for that. Like if there is something that is needed, but other brands won't fuck with it because it's not fast enough and it's not cheap enough. Like that's my intersection. Um, the thing that other brands are too smart to take on. I am just the idiot to do that thing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I love the that, super that's what I hope. <laughs> I also I'm hope, and this is, a, this is a small thing, but a big thing to me, I also hope that I can afford one or two weeks a year to hire a person to ship for me. 
Because that's the hardest thing. Like, if I go away on vacation, I can put up a message that says like, hey, I'll be back in a week. You know, I can answer your emails in a week. But if I could have somebody actually ship and fulfill um, for me so that I could go away and people could still get their stuff, that'd be rad. I'd really like that. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Come to my house, Chris, and ship all this stuff. I know. <laughs> it's, if anyone's watching this on YouTube, so actually as a sidebar, when you guys were like, do you want to be on the podcast? I was like, sure. And then when I saw it was a Zoom link, I was like, oh, shit, there's video. So I like had to put on makeup and straighten my hair. I went on <laughs> YouTube and I'm like, yeah, they put this on YouTube, too. So I had to make sure I looked nice. <laughs> um, so if anyone's actually watching this on YouTube instead of listening or you want to, um, you'll see it looks like I'm sitting in a warehouse. Yeah, these are all knee pads behind me. And oh. I grab them from there and I go over there and I ship them right from my house. Like this is all me from soup to nuts. So in five years, I hope I have at least one employee to ship for me so I can go to the Cape. Yes. OMG, I'm always looking for entrepreneurial skills. But I do, <laughs> love that, I do love that you bring up the fact that a lot of brands um, will go to like say Alibaba and then slap their um, name on it because we see it even with grips and it's so scary like people are spending their money on this and it will cause them long-term issues knee issues because the knee pads aren't right and even like grip issues because they, they put something in it that you don't even know so i do love that you bring that up that not everything is the same there really is a difference between like your brand which custom makes it took the time to do the studies the research the sizing and other brands who are cheaper but there's a reason why they're cheaper yeah absolutely and and there's nothing that i just want to and i'm not even trying to be a pollyanna and sit on the fence but like there's nothing wrong with having a less expensive brand either like a lot of people use those knee pads and they're like yeah this is great for what i need awesome like you found your brand but for all the people who are like I bought this cheap ass volleyball knee pad and it went flat and I can't like now it's useless. And then they leveled up and got a pole dance knee pad, but they're like, but it doesn't fit because this is made for someone with like a twig leg. And I have like, you know, powerful quads that I need to wrap the strap around. And I, I need something that's going to fit me. Um, maybe they'll come to me after having tried those other brands. And if, and if you don't ever need to come to me, great. Like there, I think it's great that there's a lot of different brands because there's a lot of different knees. Like there's plenty of knees for everybody. So I don't really feel the need to, to diss another brand and um, you know, uh, lower the bridge instead of raising the water, whatever that expression is, I can't think of it right now. But um, like, I don't really feel the need to be like, this brand sucks. Like, no, they all do different jobs. There's different jobs to be done and mine do a particular job. And what I hear over and over and over again is people who, they, people who are grateful to have found my brand they, they all tell me the same thing. I've tried three or four different brands and they don't work. They don't, they, they don't give me protection or they don't fit. And I'm just like grateful that they, I'm, I'm, like, I'm happy you're here. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, and when you say about grip too, it's like the dry hand shortage. I mean, and the, and the pricing on dry hands. I mean, I can't think of a hotter issue in the pole world. I'm joking, of course. But like dry hands, the price just went straight up. And everyone who is like addicted to dry hands is like, oh, I got to get that dry hands. And um, now there's like not there's there's other brands out there that do a similar job. And everyone's just putting whatever they can all over their hands for grip. And it they're not all created equally. And some of the I had a friend who ordered dry hands. And she got it. She was like, this stuff smells terrible. The bottle is exactly the same, but what was inside, it smelled bad. And I don't know how people get away with just taking the bottle and filling it with something else, but you can. I mean, I mean, it's no different than like off-market vape tanks. Like you can buy the tank and put whatever you want in it. It could be hot dog water. You don't know. And so yeah, you really don't know what you're putting on your skin. But to that end, I think a revolution is coming um, because where, you know, I'm trying to make four pole dance knee pads. I'm trying to make a four pole dance bag. Like it ain't a gym bag that is called a pole dance bag. It's not a roller skate bag that somebody stamped a pole dancer on the side and is calling it a pole dance bag. It is a fucking pole dance bag. It will fit your pleasers. It will fit your boots. Um, it will fit all your stuff. So likewise, I think there's like a, 
there's going to be a revolution, a small uprising of entrepreneurs who are like, well, why not a grip made for your skin? That's good for your skin. I have a friend that I'd like to shout out. Her name's Veronica. Um, and she's starting a, a grip company. It's called Sticky V's. And I would encourage anyone to follow it on Instagram. It hasn't launched yet. It's in pre-launch, but she's a pole dancer um, and a cosmetologist. So her plan is to come up with something that is a grip aid, but it's also not going to trash your skin. It's going to actually be good for your skin. Um, and I have another friend who is has a chemistry background, and she is making uh, wipes that are, are going to have arnica. So it's like has healing properties after you pull. I know, right? You guys are like, woo! So like it's going to have healing properties and um, almost like a baby wipe, but like something where you can wipe on stuff that's going to help you uh, heal after pull. And I said, dude, make it also a grip remover. Like people who use firm grip, like you have to like loofa that off your skin. That's real sticky grip. So she's going to add something to it that's going to remove the grip as well. So these are just two, two people I know who are in the R&D phase of coming up with products that respond to exactly what you were just saying, Chris, which tells me that there's probably hundreds of people just in New England who are like, and what about this? Like people are just coming up with these niche ideas and I'm here for it. I'm really here for it. Yeah. Love it. Love it yeah. so much. Yeah. And I, I also appreciate too, like um, the, you know, eco-friendliness of, of your product too, because um, I'll have to admit, I use the Mighty Grip ones and, and Cassie, our, our instructor, she used bees knees. She's had her bees knees knee pads for like two years now. And I've mm -hmm. gone through the Mighty Grip, like maybe like eight of them. So that's a lot of trash that I've. Right. And it's, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't ever want to greenwash my business and be like, oh yes, this is, you know, whatever. I mean, there's a lot, it, it's still, it's, the, my knee pads still have an environmental impact, but I'm really proud of their shelf life, which isn't something, I mean, it's something I knew they were going to last a long time, but when I first started, I'm like, well, I don't know how long. Cause I only just started, but, um, my friend Lucia, who is the one who's, who's working on the wipes. She, um, was my first online store customer. She still teaches in her knee pads every Friday night. So, I mean, they've lasted that long. Um, and that's the idea. If you take care of them, they should last a long time. Because I noticed that when I used other brands, the first thing that went was the pads. And I'm like, okay, well, if I can't replace the pads, I got to throw out the whole thing. Like, imagine if every time your car ran out of gas, you just threw your car away. It's like, no, just put more gas in it. It's, it's fine. Although these days, <laughs> I don't know, putting more gas in the car is just as expensive as buying a new car. But um, if you can replace the pads then you don't have to throw the whole thing away. And I, I've explored recyclable options for the pad inserts or, or even just recycling options for your used pads. And I keep calling the company and they're like, we don't have anything like that. So it'd be nice to make it even better. But just the fact that they're not going to end up in a landfill in like after three uses, I, I mean, that that's a good start anyway. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to get a pair of these knees as soon as possible. So I, I stop littering in the world. <laughs> yeah, I which, think I know, which style? I think I know a place. <laughs> I think I know a place. Which style would be best for me? Oh, I like geez, the hot, I don't hot know. pink ones. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think you'd look good and make some waves. They'd compliment your ink. Okay. But I don't know. It's really up to you. I know you wear black a lot. So I would just start with I basic do. black. It's everybody's favorite. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I also um I also read your blog a whole lot and I appreciate your teacher tips too. I've appreciated Ooh. them a few times. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's great. Do you, want, do you want to tell us a little bit about your blog? Yeah, sure. So it's called The Buzz because my whole life is is bee puns now. Um it's it's, it's the bet I've made, so I'm lying in it. Um but yeah, it's I've it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm proud of the blog. Uh, I'm proud of what the blog has become. Um, but when I first started a blog, I didn't know what the heck I was supposed to write in it um, or what it was for. So anyone who runs a business, a poll studios too, should, I, I, I don't understand why poll studio, actually I do understand. I understand why poll studio owners don't have a blog because they're fucking busy and they don't have the time. But if you can get someone else to get a student to write your blog, I mean, having an active blog is it's a great resource 
Um, it's great for SEO if you look up your keywords and you use like a you use a keyword rich um, text and stuff like that, which is stuff I've recently learned about. But um, it, it becomes an evergreen resource that really tells people like, oh, you're the go to for this. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud of what it's become. But at first it was just me typing into the computer and those ones I've, I've hidden or removed a long time ago once I finally got the hang of it. But um, yeah, I mean, just writing about the things that we're on where you are a subject matter expert and, and the teacher tips, that's, that's something that, I mean, I think every poll instructor is like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I don't need these tips. But um, when you're first starting out as an instructor, you're, maybe you do, or maybe you, you're an instructor for years and you're just like so sick of running the same warm up, or you're like, I need some new conditioning ideas. And just scrolling through the gram and hoping you find something, it's just so haphazard um, that putting together some of my, my greatest hits, uh, it's, it's a nice repository for teachers. And uh, the plan book that I have for teachers, the, the Pole Instructor Planner, it's just a low content planner for you to organize your, your thoughts and, and your my favorite thing about it is the objective and that's the teacher in me, right? Like at, at the end of, by the end of this class, students will be able to write a topic sentence, you know, or whatever it's, what is your goal? Like what, what's the whole point? What are students there to learn? What are they going to walk out the door with? And sometimes it's just all student requests. So it's all over the place, but I love coming up with, with themes. So across the top of the planner, I'll write like an objective or a theme. Like the other day I did, um, uh, what the heck did I do the other day? Jesus, I just, that's really embarrassing. I was really proud of it and I blanked on it the other day. I, 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 but anyway, I mean, I have a ton, but one that I did recently was uh, three ways to floor jade because you have students who know how to do it, right? Um, and they like doing it. You have other students who don't know how to do it. And then you, so you got to keep everybody guessing. So it was three different ways to do your floor jade and three different exits out of it. Everybody's busy, everybody's happy. And then if your objective is that everyone will be able to floor jade by the end, well then they can, and even the people who already can got a new way to do it. So having an objective, I think is something that like, with my background as a classroom teacher, it's, it's a given. But if you're a poll instructor, it might not always be your approach. It might, you know, your approach might be different. So sort of like my friend who is, both uh, a pole dancer and a cosmetologist bringing her background, her intersection together to create a grip. Like that's what makes her a subject matter expert. Likewise, like having a, a nearly two decades long career in education and then becoming a pole instructor, it's like, that's my value. That's what I can offer you. So um, I'm really like proud of the blog and what that showcases and of the planner and what that encourages. And then the, the, the lesson ideas that you get with it when when you purchase it um the planner that is like those are all theme based objectives not that you have to do those exactly but it's just to get you thinking like okay what is the goal because we all want students to walk away feeling successful why because i mean it fucking feels good but also that's what keeps them coming back if they if they keep going to class and walking away being like wow i suck at this why are they ever going to come back and i swear my my classes every week are packed. Like I teach tonight on Tuesday night, the wait list is three deep on both classes. And I, it's not because I'm the greatest pole dancer. It's not, I mean, I'm no slouch, but there's so many things I can't do. I am not the greatest pole dancer, but I'm a bomb ass teacher because I have a plan. People know that they're going to walk in and go, all right, what's on the docket for today. And they're going to walk out feeling good about something. They're going to walk away saying I did that, or I'm close to that. I'll get that next week. And that's even better because then they come back and, and they specifically want to come back to see me because I'm going to help them get that thing, which feels great. And if you contrast that with how I felt at the end of my, my public school teaching career, I mean, I am totally fulfilled by it. But at the same time, like, you know, it's a hustle. You want people to come back and see you if you're a pole instructor. You want that repeat business. You want that happy person who wants to see you and they want to take your classes. And I swear it has to do with taking the time to have a good plan. You plan for the people who are there. You know, it's nice to have a, a lesson plan that is poll two, but what if somebody signs up for your class and they're a poll three student? How are you gonna keep them interested? Or what if you have a student who's brand new to poll two, like they just got their invert, but they only 
I always like to say, but you only brought three to class, right? When I first learned to invert, it's not like I could do it every time, right? I only brought three to class, okay? So you got to keep them, you know, keep them feeling good. And if you don't plan for that, you're kind of just standing there shrugging your shoulders going, well, keep practicing. Well, no, there's got to be a modification or a combo or something that, that's in line with your theme that's going to really make your students feel like there's a reason for being here. And there and there's something for me here. So I'm really I'm really proud of that, and I'm I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I love that you mentioned that because it's so true. Plan the planning is everything. It everything. truly is. It really changed the way I teach. Starting to keep a notebook, having that objective and planning. Because I took the expert training online, so very different experience. But they really enforced having the plan going in with all those all those different variations for all the levels so i really love that you mentioned that for all the instructors out there <laughs> yeah. Excellent. i think um that was about all the questions that i had chris um did we ask her about her competitions like her oh. experiences yeah um the competitions so uh, my first, I've only really done PSO. Um, I like PSO as an organization. I, they don't pay me to say that, but I like what they're all about. Their, um, their slogan, at least it used to be, was have your moment. And I love that so much because, you know, it's, it's an amateur competition, right? Which I think people forget, <laughs> you know, it's, it's for amateurs to get up there and have their moment. Like, do you want to feel like a, like a big time pole star and, um, get on this, a real stage, real lights with a real camera and real video and photos. And you know, all of that, like you can have that, you pay your money and you get your moment. And I think that that is phenomenal because I was, you know, a 34 year old woman who had never danced before. Who's going to fucking put me on a stage answer PSO. So like, I love that, that I love that that's what they're all about. I think over the years, not through PSOs doing, but the more popular it becomes, the more people start to take it like super seriously. I mean, I, it crushes me when I walk around at PSO and I, I have placed and felt great. I've placed and felt like a fraud, like, oh shit, like I, somebody else was better than me. I don't know why I put, you know, you have that imposter syndrome. I've also not placed and been like fine with it. I've also placed, not placed rather, and been like devastated, right? I mean, it's an emotional pursuit. It's still a competition. It's okay to want to win and it's okay to be bummed when you don't. Like it, that's the nature of a competition. Even though I know all that, I still just want to remind anyone who's listening or watching, it is an amateur poll competition. Do not take it so seriously. Like it's okay to be bummed out if you didn't do as well as you hoped. Like you put a lot of effort into it. It's natural to be bummed if it doesn't go perfectly. But when I see someone like crying, you know, or, or like I walked into, I will never forget this. I walked into the bathroom to do like a nervous pee before I had to go on. And I saw a studio owner talking to her student who was looking in the mirror and she was like, we are not here to make friends. We are here to win. And I was I will never forget it. I will not shout this person out because that's just, that's not my style. But like, I will never forget it. We are not here to make friends. I was like, well, I've been fucking doing it wrong because that's the only thing I'm here for is to make friends. Like I just walked out of the bathroom and I was like, I don't, I just don't get it. Like if that's your mentality, you're at the wrong comp, bro. Like totally, because this is for amateurs to have their moment. So when I see people getting all worked up about it, um, I always like to remind them, like, this is an amateur pole competition. Like, what do you want? You know, do it for the video. <laughs> and you really want a medal? You can buy one online before you go. That's what my bestie Jen and I do. We, I make us awards before we go. Um, I got a ton of them. Uh, I'll post a picture. I'll tag you guys later. I, 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 we make awards, you know, the like, none of this matters award or like, you know, the, the attendance award. Like we, we give ourselves awards and we win before we go because it being there, you know, it, it, people can tend to take it too seriously. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. we do this for fun. <laughs> don't, don't take the fun out of it. So anyway, so I, I really do enjoy PSO. I think what they offer is extremely valuable because a lot of other competitions, you know, you have to do qualifying videos for, or there's compulsory moves. Like if there's a compulsory move, that's like 
a, co a cocoon. Like, yeah, I'm not getting in. Okay. I can't even check my blind spot comfortably on the highway. I don't, I don't, I can't. It's a lot of things that I would not qualify to do, but PSO is just pay to play and I'm down and I've done it like eight times. I mean, at a certain point, I'm like, I can't, I can't do another one. <laughs> but, um, you know, after a while, I'm like, all right, how many more times am I going to do this? But I've had fun at every single one. Um, and the only other competition that I've ever done uh, that wasn't PSO, I did Miss Pole Dance New England um, a, a handful of years ago when Rhode Island Pole Space hosted it at Minx in Groton. And that was a really interesting experience. It was really fun. Um, but, like, it was on a 50-millimeter pole. It was on a stage. Um, and just like that club environment. And of course, because I'd never like done anything like that before. I mean, I had a routine planned. I knew what I was doing and I kind of knew to like play to the, to the rail and stuff like that. So like, that was cool, but I'm used to PSO where you get on stage and you have your starting position and then the music starts. No, the DJ was waiting for me to walk up to the pole before he hit play. So I missed like the first 30 seconds of my song and was like, well, here we go. But I mean, that's all about you know, a completely different vibe for a competition. So I did, I did learn a lot from it and it was really, it was really cool. And just comparing PSO to that, would you ever at PSO climb to the top of the pole and grab the rigging or the truss? No, of course not. It's in the rules. Like don't grab that. So of course that's what I do. I'm, you know, I climb up and I only go so high and all this. Then the girl who goes on after me, who, you know, I think she actually worked at the club as well and was, was participating in the competition. She climbs all the way to the top of the pole, touches the ceiling and throw, like pushes on the ceiling to start spinning faster and faster. And I'm sitting there like, that is so fucking cool. I didn't know we could do that. So, you know, I didn't, I think participating in it um, was, was cool. But what was even better was just watching it. Like all this shit you can do. Um, that isn't against the rules. It was awesome. I, I really had a good time doing that one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that, it's nice. definitely different having the competition in like a club rather than with the rules where the, the truss and yeah. the... <laughs> <laughs> right. Do they still do Miss Pole Dance and Mr. Pole Dance New England? Not that I've heard. Um not that I've heard, I believe, and, and this is the part where like somebody would have to be the ombudsman and fact check me, but I think Miss Pole Dance, Miss Pole Dance is a franchise and you can license it. So like if Pole in the Wall wanted to sponsor it, you could license the mm -hmm. name Miss Pole Dance and it would be Miss Pole Dance Springfield and you could have it at a club. You're like, I'm listening. So I think it's something <laughs> that you can, you can license the rights to and you put on the club, but you get to put on the show, but you get to use the name. Um, that's cool. And you get together your own sponsors and stuff like that because uh, that's what uh, Liz did at Rhode, at Rhode mm. Island Pool Space. I think I think that's how it works, but um, I'm not entirely I'm not entirely sure. Um, so that's cool. it's something worth looking into. If you, yeah, if you I'll look into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, as far as PSO, I noticed that they just put up re registration for PSO Northeast. Yeah. Are you thinking, are you doing thinking it? of doing it? <laughs> I am. Yeah. 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 Um, it's funny. Cause I, I, I did it last year. Um, but I did showcase, I did double showcase with my bestie Jen. Um, yeah, and that yeah. was fun. And cause there was no, like, you know, there, it, we did showcase, so there was no pressure to really like, uh, win or be amazing. It was just be yourself and have a good time, which is great. Cause we were backstage and we saw some of the other doubles, groups warming up and we were like oh shit I'm so glad we're not competing against them because they were really incredible and we're just you know two goons having a good time so I liked not having that pressure so for anyone out there who's thinking of competing but they're like I don't really want you can get all the same things through showcase without any of the pressure of like actually getting ranked you just get up there and you and you have your moment so to speak I was thinking about doing it I actually have a routine in my back pocket that I just did at our showcase and um, I'm like, geez, maybe I should do this at PSO, but I also might just like, you know, go and watch and support my students, like, and kind of be, play that role. I'm not really sure what I want to do yet for that. So what it's funny because uh, I saw the registration and I'm like, oh, I got to sign up. And I'm like, wait, think about this. Like, hold your horses and think you've done this eight times. What are you going to get out of this that you haven't already gotten? Slow down. And I think actually what I'd like to try is I know they started doing virtual competitions 
during the pandemic out of necessity. And now that I have this, this routine in, in my back pocket, I'm like, what if I just submitted it virtually? You know, like that I've, only because I've never done it, like to, to do a virtual competition, watch the live stream on Twitch with a glass of wine and sit at home. Like that might be a nice experience, you know, uh, other than because yeah, I've done I've done the other in person thing so many times now that, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something different and maybe a virtual will 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 be that kind of different thing. But I mean, I'm going <laughs> to whether I compete or perform or whatever, I'm going to be there. I mean, I'm going to be there. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> Can I tell you though, I, I've done the PSO online and I thought it would be a different feeling, but you still get like the nervous feeling. Like I still like had to pee and like, I like <laughs> adrenaline and like, ah, <laughs> like, when I was just watching me on the video. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're looking for some relaxation, I don't think you're going to find it. <laughs> I'm not going to find it in a virtual competition. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll still be just as Although nervous. I did find... What is it? Whole circus. I think it was a little oh. more calming because you were allowed to edit it. You couldn't. You didn't have to like record it all at once. It was very different. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I get nervous all the time. No, oh no, matter. I would. I broke out into sweats as soon as this Zoom chat came up. I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I probably would still be nervous, but um. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought uh, it would be something different to do. Because, um, yes. you know, PSO, it, it's still fun to do. I still get nervous. There's nothing that's old hat about it. But knowing how much time and money and nervousness goes into it, I'm like, do I really want to do that to myself again? <laughs> and um, probably in yes. July, I'll be like, yes, I do. And I'll sign up. But I'm trying to hold my horses for now. <laughs> Same as soon as I, I kept like, you know, my students were asking, they're like, when is it going to be up? And then like, as soon as it came up, I was like, oh my God, let's register. And the, but the same as you, I was like, no, y you want to do it, but like, you might get injured along the way. Like just yeah. wait until. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I you really want to try to do it. You want to find the sweet spot because you want to get a good hotel. Last yeah. year, um, we waited a, a little bit. So it's such a hard line to fill. <laughs> I know. And yeah. a couple of years, it, it sold out. You know, I signed yeah. up right away and then people were saying, oh, it's sold out. And I was like, what do you mean it's sold out? And it makes sense. No. I mean, unless the competition is going to be four days long, you know, yeah. you're there on a Tuesday morning. Um, they, they have to limit the number of spots. And I had a friend who was on the wait list, like if a spot opens up and I'm like, geez, I cannot imagine like three days before they go, a spot opened up. Do you want it? I would be like, uh, no, no, <laughs> not ready. Wow. I know. So, I, so I think yeah. people sign up right away because in the past it has sold out. Um, yeah. And I mean, so it's yeah, you got to find that sweet spot. I think it's interesting, and I've mm -hmm. talked about this before with a few friends. I would love to talk to Amy, who has an aerial mm -hmm. view of her organization, and be like, tell me the difference between the regionals. You know, like, like, I wonder how Northeast differs from like, you know, Northwest or, or like um, Atlantic, you know, I just wonder what like the key differences are. Like which category should you enter at which one to get the best medal? I mean, <laughs> not yet th that, but I was thinking more like, um, I don't know, like what tricks trend and oh, like how fierce is the competition, oh, like is one more laid back than another? You know, like, yeah. you know, I'm, like you reached out at so Northeast, like, do people come in in like matching track jackets from their studio? <laughs> whereas <laughs> at Atlantic, they they roll up, you know, casual. I don't know. I'm making it up, but um, I just wonder what the difference in the vibe is. You know, um, <laughs> I love yeah. those questions. Oh, I'm so sure. you gotta have Amy on next and, and ask that. Just be like, I think that's a good idea. idea. I wish it. <laughs> Have we reached out to PSO already? No, we we haven't reached out to really anyone as of yet. <laughs> we should see that's the hustler in me. I'm like, who, who? I'm on your show, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's brainstorm. We're just kind of rolling along here. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thankfully, a lot of people have reached out to us. I think we re I reached out to Pole Circus, and then everybody else thankfully reached out to us, which was cool. And we reached that out to you, that's nice. Sarah. Yeah. But we reached out to you. <laughs> and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. 
<laughs> but yeah, yeah. We are the ma matching track jacket studio. Oh, I love that. That's great. You intimidate the competition with your matching track jacket. Yeah, I can't wait for this year's jacket. <laughs> right, we have different designs every year. I love that. That's so cute, though. I love that. Yeah. I, I, like, it is funny, though. Like, you go backstage and there are people with, like, their matching studio outfits. And I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't think of that. You know, <laughs> maybe we should have done that, right? And then, um, more like, um, I would also love to, and I'd love to do it in a nice way, not in, like, a mean way. But, like, the types of people you'll encounter backstage, right? Like, the person who's there to make friends and meet everybody. Uh, the person who's, like, got their headphones on and just doing uh, their routine in their head on repeat. You know, the person who runs in every five minutes and goes, the poles are spinning way too fast. Yeah. The poles are spinning way too fast. Right. And then the I'm aggressive uh, <laughs> stretch intimidator is my favorite backstage. There's just someone in a full split reaching back for their foot, uh -huh. like acting like it's nothing. Like they're really intimidating you with how flexible they are. Um, but yeah, like all those gross too. Yeah, that's That'd true. Be awesome. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then it's just like all of the people who you'll meet backstage uh, at a competition. Um, you know, the, <laughs> the, the rumor starter, like I heard the poles spinning slow, or like someone <laughs> please it just stop, and you know, whoever that is, um, <laughs> and spreading spreading uh, rumors. But um, I don't know. It's just I, I find that just the atmosphere of a competition extremely yeah. interesting. But you got to keep yourself like distance from all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, that really makes me sad that you saw that studio owner in the bathroom, you know, creating that environment for their student. Like that really it, sucks. It broke my heart because I wanted to go over and be like, you know, you don't have to do this, right? You have a choice. You feel like right now you you don't have one, but you do. So yeah, but and you can people, make friends. <laughs> some people, but some people like I have to. I also have to flip the script and say some people sign up because they want that. Like they want like that aggressive training coach who's going to be like, take no prisoners. Like some people really, I don't, but some people really get off on that. That's motivating for them. And okay, fine. It, I guess. You got that. You're right. You know, yeah. I mean, I guess some people like it. <laughs> oh, I don't think any of our, our students would ever like no, that. No, I mean, I'm just, just I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to be totally fair, I mean, maybe maybe that's why they go there. They go to a competition studio that's because they true. want to be a fierce competitor. Okay, fine. And it just reminds me that, you know, there's there's a lot of different studios out there. And, um, you know, the state yeah. of the world poll, though. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. You're right. It's an amateur competition. Right. It's an amateur competition, oh. man. Like... You're getting butterfly to flatline. What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> be a Russian butterfly to it. Yeah, seriously. Like <laughs> you're getting you're getting a jade that is not even close to flat. That's what I got to give you. Okay, like just deal with it. The oh, no, <laughs> Yeah, those world polls. Um, I because I was trying to go for it this year, and I was so discouraged. Like the scoring, like your jade has to be either the full 180 degrees or you lose points if it's 160, 140, 120. It was ridiculous. I was like, I can't even keep up with this. Yeah. And 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 you know what? If that's if that's the kind of comp you want to enter because you really like being, I don't know, like you want to quantify your success, like go for it. You're gonna get what you need. But like I just crack up when I get feedback that's like lower your back leg in your jade. And I'm like, thanks, bro. Like I'm trying. I'm that's as far as it goes. What do you want from me? I'm 42 years old. Like, find me another 42 year old who can do this. Okay. Like, what do you want from me? Lower your back leg in your jade. Thanks. You want to point my toe while I'm at it? Oh, I know. I, I got what, a similar comment there. Like, work on your inverts. And I was like, damn, little <laughs> do you know that pole was spinning so fast. I almost died. My inverts are good. <laughs> but also, like, what do you think I've been doing? Like, if, you, if you're going to watch my invert and say, work on your inverts, you should have seen it six months ago. Like, you know? But then, but see, I love to get all like, um, I get, I love to get all funny and like worked up about the comments that I get. 
But then I have to I have to give myself my own advice. It's an amateur poll competition. <laughs> Stop getting worked up about the comments, you know. Wow. But they are funny. They are funny sometimes. Where uh, right. I've gotten I've gotten work on your face. <laughs> like, ouch. <laughs> ouch! It's a rough one. Or, that one so many times too. Or like, don't make the same face. And I'm like, okay. And then I also got. Don't smile when people clap for you. And I was like, I'm sorry, my mother raised me, right? I will <laughs> smile mean? and say thank you to people who pay me a compliment. But you know what it was? It was it was um it was the competition where I I debuted Bee's Knees. So when my friends cheered for me, of course, when I took them uh, off, I looked at them you and were like, like, Yeah, buddy. No, no regrets, not even one letter on that one. But you know. <laughs> But I've also gotten like, you know, I've also gotten good feedback too, but it, mm. some some of the the, the lines, uh, don't take your clothes off just for the sake of taking them off. I was like, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I, 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 all right. I, I didn't They really were like, know. leave them on a little bit longer for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't take them off just for the sake of taking them off. I'm like, what am I taking them off for? World peace? Like, they come, it's an exotic routine. <laughs> I, I'm taking my clothes off. <laughs> or not exotic, uh, maybe, you know, sensual or something more appropriate. You did it wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I'm up there stuck in my sweatshirt. Like, oh, I can't get this thing off. I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> you got hot. You were like, I'm hot now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you... you you put so much work into, or at least I do. You put, I put so much work into a routine. I put it up there. And the second I get the feedback, I just, I hyper-focus on the one negative or silly thing. And I'm like, this person doesn't know how hard I worked. And then I remember, no, this person does not know how hard you worked. They, they're just judging you based on this one three-minute thing that you did. And they're doing their best just like you are, you know? Yes. Um, so you got to just let it go. Not one of my strong suits, but I work very hard at just letting it go. I will throw in one last one, though. Um, no more than three heel clacks. More than three is excessive. <laughs> so now apparently there's like a, a an ideal number of heel clacks, you know? Uh, yeah. And this is where PSO would come in and and be like and and do like the disclaimer about feedback. And they're absolutely right. Like you just take it for what it's worth and and you either you either take it or you don't and and there you go so it's i i do know like how to keep it in perspective i'm not that obtuse but it is kind of funny to share some of the the worst the yeah. worst feedback you've ever gotten it's if like a limit you be did you really have to write that was that really necessary you know, <laughs> Some of the, one of the best things that they did so i've never judged um but my friend jen has judged several times and she told me, uh, she told me this, and I thought it was great. One of the best things that they added was that there's like fill, like standard comments you can click, so you don't have to actually pick, like, don't jump into your inverts. Like, you don't have to write that. You can pick the comment that says like, work on strengthening lifting into your inverts. Like, it's it's phrased in a positive way. So I think, you know, as far as feedback goes, like they've improved their ability to give feedback based on feedback. So. Um, I don't know. It's we'll, we'll have I'll have we'll have to do it and compare feedback in in November and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll come back. We'll have a recap episode and be like, so yeah. we're gonna read our comments. <laughs> I think that that would be hilarious because you know some of them hurt because they're true, but some of them are just like inscrutable. Like I don't even know yeah. what that means. <laughs> Like if there's a limit on heel clacks, then they're not ready for my tap dancing heels um, <laughs> routine. <laughs> also, I, I am I think I am not ready for that. I, I'm very excited at this prospect. <laughs> so I will say before we close out, I did listen to your episode on funny poll things, like <laughs> yeah. funny things you say in poll class. And yeah. I so I was listening in the car, and as soon as I pulled into my driveway, I grabbed my phone and I made a list. So <laughs> maybe that'll be my parting um, contribution. So um, some of the phrases that I say, especially when the pole has to go between your legs, um, I tell people to butter their bread or to hot dog their bun. 
um, when people are doing like a pull up or something um, and I'm worried that they're going to swing forward, I warn them not to clang their clam. So, um, and then when you're upside down in a crucifix and you put your hands on the ground and if you take your legs off too fast, you can slam your crotch. So I, I'll have new, newer students. I'm like, okay, put your foot on the pole, take the other foot off and put it on the ground and then crab walk away. I call that the safe cookie game. We want to keep your cookie safe. Don't um, slam down. But probably the one that I'm most known for is yo-ho-ho -ho your arm. So anytime you have to like hook your arm under your knee, okay, for like anything, whenever I describe it, I feel like a sailor, like yo-ho-hoing my arm. So picture it, like if you're listening, picture like a sailor swinging his arm back and forth with like a mug of beer. So I always say yo-ho-ho -ho your arm. And it's so pervasive now that my students say it seriously. They'll be like, okay, so you're going to go up into your jasmine, move your bottom leg, and then yo-ho-ho -ho your arm. I'm like, yes, that is correct. And I can't believe these are the things that I say, but they're working. Um, and then if you have ever done the seated move, I, I've heard it called a bird's nest, but you're sitting on the pole, your outside arm reaches over the top of your head and you have to go through the hole. I tell people to give birth to their own head and that usually works because <laughs> they have to like shove their head through the arm. Um, the armhole, so I call that giving birth to your own own head. Um, I also cannot not make sound effects when I do things. So I'm sure we all do this when you invert and then hook a leg. You're gonna go, huh, huh, zoop, ba ba da ba, and rete, like whatever. It doesn't matter. You just make sound effects. Um, and then one of the things you guys talked about was like knee pits. I find that so funny because a knee pit is such a basic term for a pole dancer to talk about that when you say it in real life, people are like, you're what? I'm like, you're knee pit. What the fuck else would you call it? And the answer is they don't. It's not that they call it something else. Normies don't call it something else. They just don't have any occasion to refer to their knee pits. But I did have a student forget the term knee pit and called it a leg elbow, which I respect so much. It took me at least eight to 10 seconds to figure out what they meant. But I was like, that's genius. Your leg elbow. That's what it, your knee is your leg elbow. Um, and then only a couple more. Uh, nip slip. Obviously, I think most people know what that is. But in the pole world, you can have a lip slip as well, um, which I think is not talked about that much. And speaking of lips, in Australia, <laughs> they call it, they call them flaps, <laughs> which I didn't know. Until, but I was following, I think it was Miss Philly Pole Dancer. I love her so much. She visited the U.S. and hiked Red Rocks out in Vegas. And of course, because she's a pole dancer, did a split on the Red Rocks. And her caption was, I almost burnt my flaps off. The rocks were so hot. And I, I mean, I think she posted this in like 2015. I haven't stopped laughing about it. <laughs> that they call, that, that down under, they call the down under your flaps. And I think that that is probably the greatest thing I've ever heard and the note on which I have to end. Like, flaps, you're welcome. <laughs> I think I saw that one and I was, and when I was reading it, I was like, what are flaps? I thought it was her pants. So I'm so glad you covered it. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's definitely not pants. <laughs> oh my gosh. Vernacular. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for taking the time to, to share your whole story yeah, and your my pleasure. entrepreneur history and how you made the amazing bees knees knee pads. <laughs> oh person, you said you never sleep, but you are just killing it and always <laughs> utilizing that time wisely. I need to be like that. When I can't sleep, utilize my time better. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love most about your story is that you've just gone with the flow your, the whole time and, and that's been your success. So I think that's a really good um, story for us, for at least me to be inspired by. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it sometimes feels like like going with the flow sounds very peaceful. It's more like um, I am flailing while going down the rapids and just screaming for help. And I'm very lucky that I have people along the way who will help me. 
Yeah. I'm going with the flow and it is very fast and furious and I'm almost drowning, but it's great. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah. Thank well, you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And I enjoyed thoroughly my visit to Pole in the Wall. Um, oh, I, thank you. Yeah, my, my 2022 goal is to visit a new studio every month. I obviously, my timing is great because gas prices are through the fucking roof, but um, <laughs> I, I did make the trip out to um, Pole in the Wall in Springfield and really enjoyed it. Um, it was It's an adorable space and I really loved the class. I loved the warm welcome. That's the great thing about traveling around to different studios and just feeling the vibe. Like I have not found a bad vibe yet like we have great pole studios in new england so i highly encourage people to visit pole in the wall because it's just i mean great instruction but a great space and a great vibe and really nice people and it has a parking lot i mean you can't beat that <laughs> <laughs> yes and you know, hopefully i can come and, and visit and take your class soon too hopefully that. someone can sub on my tuesday night so i can take your tuesday night <laughs> class <I'll stop laughs> <I'm not. laughs> Yes. Well, do you want to join us in our sign off? Sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm Mandy Mack. And I'm Chris Rivers. And I'm Sarah B of Bees Knees Knee Pads. <laughs> we, we are signing, signing off. off. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>